Hi guys, Ariel with Ariel Paints. Some of you that have followed my channel for a long time will probably know my ongoing evolution of the full face unicorn. So I love painting unicorns, but I love painting like the actual unicorn on kids' faces and making it into a mask and arms, you name it. The full face unicorn has always been really hard for me. Um, and you know, for the last two years, I've really changed how I've done it. And there are a few videos where you can go check out, um, previous versions of how I was doing it on the job. I am almost never really satisfied with how I do my full face unicorn. I do think it gets better and better. So I do want to share with you guys how I am doing my full face unicorn right now on the job. Now, one of the things that I have continued to do since my last full face uh, unicorn video is use a sponge for the horn. So I am still using my like sponge stamp for the horn and that has worked out so, so well for me. I do like it a little bit better than using a one stroke because the one stroke can be kind of inconsistent and sometimes I would make the horn and it would be perfect and other times it might not be that perfect and there is nothing that I dislike more than watching a little kid walk away from my chair and me thinking like, ah, oh, that horn's a little funny or it's just not right. I can't stand that. I want it to be right, especially because I think this is a really finicky design. I see a lot of full face unicorns that I don't really like. Um, some that are amazing, but not practical for on the job. So for me, it has to be both. It has to look like a unicorn. It has to have the magical sparkly effect, but I have to be able to do it quickly and I have to be able to have a few adaptations of it so that I can change it depending on how busy my event is. So I'm going to go through the full tutorial and explain everything I did here. Um, but first, I want to talk a little bit about this sponge because last time I posted a video about the sponged unicorn horn, I got a lot of questions. So this is what I do to create this. And I have created more, um, but I'm going to show you how I do it. I also want to talk a little bit about the fact that I will reuse this sponge on the job. Now, when I am using sponges over kids' eyes for cats or tigers or doing the muzzle for tigers, cats, dogs, whatever it may be, I use that sponge and I put it in my dirty sponge bag. For the unicorn horn where I am just stamping the forehead and the ears, very often I will use this a few times before I get a clean new sponge. That is my preference. You can use a brand new one every time. You can use the same one. I am not here to tell you how to do that. You can look up the different rules, if there's standards in your city or your country, and if it dictates that you should do something specific, that is up to you. A lot of face painters use one sponge per color, and they have for years, and that is fine. I do not judge those people. It is your business. You choose how to run your business. But I will tell you, one of the reasons I'm okay with using this over and over again is because I am using it on the forehead and I can't remember the last time someone caught a cold from someone else's forehead. Now, of course, somebody's going to say to me, well, germs are germs, of course. And being uh, clean on the job is very, very important to me. And I actually have a lot of face painters I work with comment that I am one of the cleanest face painters they've ever seen. So I do try to be very, very clean. But I also want to be honest with you guys that I don't have 500 of these cut in my kit. I have maybe six or seven right now. Um, and I'm probably going to cut a few more. So I do reuse this a few times on the job. That being said, I want to show you how I cut it. It's very, very easy. Um, I do prefer to use the Krivlin black sponges for this because they tend to be very, very dense. They are a much, much harder sponge than some of the other sponges you might use. And all I do is that very first sponge that I ever cut for my unicorn horn, I will take, you know, one of those and I just use it as a guide. So when I decided I wanted to make more of them, I grabbed that first one. I went ahead and I lined it up to the other sponge that is already a half moon shape. And so let me go ahead and make sure that's nice and lined up. 
And then I grab some very, very good sharp kitchen scissors. And the key here, let me get to the side so you can see this. The best. All right, so now that I'm in a better angle, I go ahead and I line up my unicorn horn template that I already have, and you could cut out a piece of paper if you'd rather, but this, I'm lazy. This is the easiest way for me to do it. Uh, make sure you have nice sharp scissors and do a nice even solid cut. So you don't want to cut this in sections or slowly. You want to do it quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and just do one cut. And if you have to do one little cut at the end, that's fine. But this way I get a nice even edge with very, very little fraying or anything to cut off. So I do have like a little section here, if you can see that. See how the edge got kind of squared off? I don't want that, so I'm just going to snip that off and then I can even round out the edge and the back just a little bit. And there we go. So, so now I have a perfect little template of my unicorn horn. Um, some of these I did cut the top off a little bit so they're a little bit shorter but I don't really mind them being long or short because of the how I do the horn then I will show you this in the video a little bit more but I'm really loving using this silly farm summer sunrise cake because since these are still too large really for a kid's forehead because the horn would be all the way up into their hairline what I love about this is that I use the top three colors, that gradation of the metallic gold, yellow, and orange for the horn, but I go ahead and I load the pink and I stamp that on. I usually get like a little bit of pink depending on how big the kid's forehead is, but if I don't get any of that pink, I don't care because I then use the pink and I stamp in the center of the ears on the side and it's a really quick, easy, fluid, motion to stamp that on, do the ears, and then I continue with all my details. So that has been the way I've been stamping on unicorn horns for maybe, I don't know, six months now or so. Every now and then I'll still do a rainbow unicorn horn because I do love the way that looks and I don't like to paint things the same like all of us. See, I like to change things up. Nobody wants to paint the same thing over and over again. But when I am at the very, very busy event, public event, where I look behind me and there's a hundred kids in line, this has been my go-to unicorn. It looks great in person, it's great on the job, and it's super, super fast. So if you would like a detailed tutorial of how I do this, then go ahead and keep watching and I will show you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my cake and I'm going to spray it down and I'm going to load my unicorn horn sponge. And I do have a video that I posted recently about how to load sponges to get really good coverage. So if you're a beginner and you need some help with that, go check out that video. So now it's as simple as lining up that sponge in the center of the child's forehead and you just want to press and squeeze that color out. I try to keep the top of that triangular sponge pretty stationary and then I move the bottom back and forth a little bit. So in the end, I have more of that cone shape and that it's larger or whiter on the bottom and thinner on the top. It does not have to be perfect because we're going to correct it with some line work. So now that my unicorn horn is on, I'm going to take the excess pink on the bottom of my sponge and I'm just going to anticipate where I want the center of those ears to be, which is usually towards the outer part of the eyebrow. And for the ears, I am taking what has become one of my number one favorite one strokes. It's by Susie Amara, I believe is her name. And it's a silly farm one stroke with just white and black and it is called the unicorn of course so how perfect is that so i'm going to take that and i'm just going to do a one stroke ear and you can see i start flat i pivot my brush up i give it a little bit of a twist and then i come down on the edge just to create the illusion of a bit of a thicker ear closer to the horn and a little bit thinner 
on the outside, but this is so brilliant because at busy events, I don't have to line the ears. I don't have to be too particular about it. I can do this unicorn so incredibly fast and the kids absolutely love it. If you lose a little bit of your pink in this process, just dab some more on with your sponge and you can correct it really easily. Now I can do this unicorn in like a one minute version and a five minute version. So stick around to the very end. I'm going to show you guys some pictures of more elaborate unicorns and like the quickest unicorn possible using this method. So I love using my Leanne lollipop for the hair and really any of Leanne's rainbows, because I believe that a unicorn should have rainbow hair and lots of sparkles. Um, I use a lot of times to one of Nat's gold edition, the blue wren, I think is really beautiful for hair because it's very whimsical and it contrasts really, really nicely with the horn. Um, but more often than not, I do grab the rainbow because girls always ask for a rainbow unicorn. So this way you can either do the horn in rainbow and then do a different color hair, or you can do the rainbow hair and they like both versions. So I'm just for the center kind of doing a heart shape. I found that that works out the best. Sometimes I'll drag it down onto the nose a little bit, but just try to hug that horn. And then for the side here, I'm just wiggling down on the side of my cheeks. Sometimes I will do more of a curl with the rainbow and I'll go onto the cheek so that if a kid is looking directly into the mirror, they can see more of the rainbow. But I kept it pretty high on my forehead um, for this video. But you can see I'm just wiggling my brush, getting that rainbow on there. This is the point at events too, when I put that rainbow down, that the moms get so incredibly excited and so into it. So I can do this part really quickly as well, but you can see I'm taking the toe of the brush here and just adding some wiggles so that it's a little bit more unicorn hairish. Um, but it's really up to you. If you're in a pinch, just lay it on fast and keep moving. And if you have time, you can be more particular with it. This design is pretty light on line work. I do make sure to line the horn. Sometimes I put in extra little curves like I'm doing here. Sometimes I make the horn more of a straight edged horn and then sometimes I make it a little bit more curved. I do them in many different ways. Again, the photos at the end will show you a few different versions of how I do the horns. But in the end, I want the horn to be distinct. If I have time, I'll do a little bit of shading and then sometimes I'll also add gold glitter to it, but you definitely want the horn of your unicorn to stand out in a design because that is what makes it a unicorn, but you want it to stand out in a good way. Um, so just be careful how you line it, practice. Um, if I have time, I like to add some black into the hair as well, just to define it but very often when I'm really busy this is a step that I skip and I do not do because if there's not time then it's one of the easiest things to avoid. I do like to add a little bit of dimension for the ears just a teardrop and some flicks of hair on the inside and then if I line the hair around the horn, I like to add at least a couple little wiggles or swirls on the outside uh, hair area as well. Just to bring it all together, it of course makes the design more fluid and consistent. Depending on how old the child is, you can add some eyeliner, eyeshadow, and a couple flicks of eyelashes if you would like. It just adds to the overall cuteness of your unicorn. Stars and unicorns go incredibly well together and it's a great way to fill up that negative space. So I'm going to take some white star blends and a BAM stencil and I'm gonna fill in all of my negative areas with some quick stars. This is a really easy way to fill up that forehead and even go down on the cheek with stars if you want. And I really like using star blends because 
it makes it less messy for me on the job and it keeps my stencils a lot cleaner. I don't get any of that tacky dried up paint that then transfers on to the child's design where I don't want it to be. So I am a huge fan of star blends and look how white and crisp and clean it looks. Um, if you don't use star blends, I would highly recommend getting just the black and white for stenciling alone because it is a total lifesaver. Okay, so far so good. I think it's really cute just like this, but no unicorn is complete in my opinion without glitter. I very often will just take my glitter spritzer and I will spray the design down. You can see I put a little bit of glitter on the horn there, but I really love adding the chunky glitter. This is Orion by American Body Art and it is the glitter cream. So I do not have to worry about smearing my stars or smearing my paint. So I really like adding that on the forehead and then I usually add it just on the highlight point of the cheeks as well. And this is definitely like the cherry on top, you know, without glitter and rainbows, is it a unicorn? I don't think so. So what's better than a little rainbow glitter? I really love the way that looks. And then I always ask the girls if they want lipstick and I use the Too Faced Melted Matte Lipstick, which I have on today as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you give it a try. Please like and subscribe to my channel and stick around for a few different photos of unicorns that I do on the job and I will see you guys in my next video.